How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 87 of Park 2 Primera. Today, we have the small matter of our second consecutive Champions League final. Last year, we lost in the final. This time around, I want to go that one step further. And well, since we are last here, we secured the La Liga title in not all that convincing a manner. Um, yeah, we ended up winning it, but we did drop points towards the end of the season. Two draws in our last three. However, Barcelona also slipped up. It didn't go down to the final day. We got 92 points, a 69 goal difference, well worked by the team. And uh, in the end, we're the champions once more. And well, <laughs> it's impossible not to get a sense of deja vu here, isn't it? We're on for the treble. We've won the Copa del Rey. We've won La Liga. There's a Champions League final last year. Do we want to talk about... I don't know if I want to talk about last year. Do I? I have to, don't I? We lost 3-2 to Arsenal. Oh, this year it's probably tougher opposition in PSG, to be honest. But yes, I'm nervous. I'm excited. It's going to be really difficult. PSG are good. Um, if we just have a look at their team, they've got Camavinga in their ranks in midfield. He's not bad, is he? Uh, they've got Mbappe up front because it's PSG in Football Manager. They always seem to keep Mbappe. It's going to be interesting to see next year in Football Manager if Mbappe just leaves on a free transfer after the first transfer window every time. I feel like that would be quite nice. Then Maybe then PSG wouldn't be this scary. Obviously, they've also got the likes of Kai Havertz in their team. He's quite good. And, uh, well, across the board, if we just <laughs> sort their players by ability, um, they're, they're quite good. Uh, so that, I mean, that's the review. PSG, they're quite good. Uh, they've won Liga every single year since the beginning of this save game. Oh, boy. Just as a little refresher, how did we get to this point? How did the Champions League play out to give us this final of PSG v Racing? Well, of course, for ourselves, we dispatched of Napoli, Tottenham, Chelsea in some pretty convincing manner, to be honest. It wasn't the most difficult of draws. I feel like we dodged a few of the more difficult teams. As for PSG, they knocked out Manchester United. They knocked out Man City 5-0. They knocked out Juventus 5-2. Um, yeah, they're quite scary, aren't they? Um, yeah, I... It's PSG and Football Manager. They just have loads of money. It's not fair. So the plan for today's episode is to do this game against PSG, have it on extended highlights, a full bumper match, hopefully, that ends with us winning the Champions League finally. And then from there, we're going to have the end of season review portion on the end. In terms of team news for today's game, Siapina's injured. Mm. I've given him injections. Uh, even then, I don't really want to risk him. I'm going to have him on the bench as an option that we can bring on. Of course, we get a full bench here, which is always useful uh, for the knockout stages of the Champions League. So we can stack it full of talent. We might as well have a goalkeeper on the bench as well. Uh, I mean, in terms of team news, it's very, very standard. We have the, the Golden Glove winner, Ramadani, the best goalkeeper in the world. Hopefully, he's going to be able to keep Mbappe at bay. At right back, it's Thomas Estevez. At left back, it's Perez. Of course, a lot of these players, they know what can, you know makes a Champions League final. They were in one last year. Gvardiol, of course, was in that team. The one member of our defence who wasn't in last year's uh, defeat against Arsenal was Petra Zuolo. Of course, we signed him this year for 53 million. He was meant to be this player to take us to that next level. Today, we're going to find out if he actually has done that. Moving up into the midfield, we've got Kapanu and Tonali alongside each other. Of course, Tonali, our captain, a player who inspired a comeback last year in the final. Kapanu, by comparison, just a remarkably consistent individual who I feel like we can rely on as our ball-winning midfielder. Out on the left-hand side, we've got Konsei Sao. He was absolutely nuts in the semi-final. A massive, massive reason we are able to make it as far as we have this year. Out on the right, we've, of course, got Pedro Porro. Through the middle, we have Hannibal. And, uh, well, I'm hoping he's going to be able to do the business for us. The Frenchman against PSG. And up top, big call to be made. Siapin is out injured. I am giving Avramides the nod. And I really hope I'm not going to live to regret it. I mean, he should be a phenomenal, complete forward. Um, I just... I, 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 I I don't want to lose this year, everyone. I can't lose two years in a row. I've been... I'm not doing very well with Champions Leagues in FM22. I, I just want to win. I, be, I just want to win. Over on the bench, we've got some good options. The likes of Galaretta, Galini, Tussar, Calderon, Siapina with those injections. Gök Deniz as well and Luzzi. Lots of goal scorers. If we're chasing a game, we've got the firepower we can bring on 
to maybe get us a goal or two. Um, all in all, I'm pretty content with the squad. I think we're in as good a position as we could really be in, with the exception of the Ciapina injury. Players are rested and raring to go. Unlike last year, the season only ended a week before the finals. There wasn't this awkward kind of couple of week period. We're fit. We're match fit. We've just won the league. Hopefully we can keep the momentum going into this game. Okay, this team is submitted. I am nervous for this. I'm expecting PSG to play a 4-2-3-1. I had a little look at how they set up, and I think this is going to be a really, really big game for Hannibal. Um, I think he's going to get a little bit of space in behind the centre mids. So that's certainly where I'm hoping we can have success. I think a big challenge for us today is going to be with Ciapina. Uh, worth noting, Mbappe playing out on the right-hand side for them. He's played as a striker a lot this year. But yes, Capanu needs to have Havertz in his back pocket. Uh, if Mbappe is going to be playing out on the right, it's going to be a big day for Perez. Let's hope that the young Spanish fullback is up to the task. He's a good defensive wingback. Mbappe is quite difficult to defend. And of course, we are on extended highlights of this game. I was prepared this year. I did it in the preferences before we got into the game. And uh, well, last year's final didn't have the most highlights in the world. I'm hoping we're going to see a little bit more today as Hannibal brings it forward and... <laughs> It wasn't a bad effort to start, really, into the side netting. Okay, PSG throwing on the far side. I talked about this a lot last year during the final, but I'm I'm very nervous for this. You don't get many Champions League finals. And, oh my word, Petrozuolo, he wasn't here for the last final, but that tackle there is going to settle him into the game. But yeah, these opportunities are going to be few and far between. I am very pleasantly surprised we've been able to get back in the Champions League, back, you know, into the final back-to-back -back years. That's a really big achievement. Unfortunately... We're behind in this final after seven minutes. And I talked about Kapanu. I talked about the need to keep tight to Kai Havertz. And I honestly thought he was offside here. I guess someone is playing him on. Even then, it was very close. It was Perez at left back. Last year, we went two goals down very early on. I don't want history to repeat itself. Please, football manager. We've got a minute and a half later, we've got another highlight. We need to settle into this game. We can't let that goal throw us off our rhythm. Pedro Porro, Estevez on the overlap. The way they play with attacking wingers, the wingbacks are going to get a lot of space to roam into here. Might leave us exposed if we do give away the ball. But, um, yeah, do expect to see the wingbacks pretty involved in the play going forward. Uh, it's a bit of a calculated risk, but it's one that I think we have to take here. As Mbappe is in behind Tonali, puts in a good tackle, but it falls straight to Mbappe, who rebonas it into the box, shoots, it's blocked. Camavinga shoots and it's blocked and we'll just about get it away from danger. Jack, remember to breathe. I mean, so far in this game, we are edging out possession. Both teams have had, you know, a few shots, but only the one shot on target ended up in the back of the net. I don't feel like we need to panic just yet. And well, Perez has space here to get that ball into the box. Ellis Corridor at right back. See you later, son. Yeah, remember Corridor? He's here. Last year when we took on Arsenal, Zivkovic, our right back at the time that from the previous year was playing against us. This year, it's Corridor. Champions League finals are just full of racing right backs, it turns out. Kamavinga shoots from range. It's blocked away. Lots and lots of highlights in this game. PSG... I mean, a fair, fair few speculative shots from range. I don't mind that necessarily. The big thing is to just limit them to those long range shots and deal with the ball when it makes its way into the box like that. Pedro Porro bringing the ball forward for us here. What can he do? He's going to well make his run down the byline. Can he get the ball into the mixer? The answer is no. I'm very tempted to switch Avramides to advance forward from complete forward just so he's always stood on the back line. I feel like in this kind of game, there's going to be chances to lump the ball over the top to our striker. And a complete forward will drop deep quite a lot during the early phases of play. I want Avramides on the shoulder like this. Oh, would Ciapina have scored it? Would Ciapina... That is exactly the kind of thing that I think we're more likely to get out of an advanced forward rather than a complete forward. So I'm going to change Avramides for that reason. I hope that's not going to impact our ability to keep hold of the ball here. We've got a corner. We're usually very good from these. Can we be good from this one? I mean, I think it's going to be ruled out. Petrozuolo got his header on it. The ref's blown his whistle. The, the linesman is flagging for something. What? What's been given? A foul. A foul. Are you kidding me? Oh, it was in the back of the net. It was in the back of the net, everyone. Petrozuolo got his head on it. A goal ruled out for a foul in the build-up. 
It feels unjust. It feels unfair. But with five minutes left of the half, we want to end strongly here. Tonali, Hannibal. Don't lose the ball here, mate. Keep hold of it if you can. Hannibal. Estevez is on the overlap here. Porro should give it to him. Does. Loads of time and space to potentially get the ball into the box. Shorter to Porro. Back to Estevez. Whipped in. Hannibal on the volley. It's blocked. Can we get it back into the box? We can't. The assistance flag is going to be raised for offside. I mean, we're, we're having chances, we're creating opportunities, and we have a free kick here. Pedro Porro, oh my word, the keeper stops it again. PSG are on the ropes to end this half. We look like the better team. At the break, we're a goal down, but you can see here the second half of that first half. PSG did nothing. Going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I want to try and mo motivate them a little bit here. Telling Avramides there's no pressure on him. There is pressure on him. I need him to get a goal. Siapina's had injections. There is a temptation to bring him on in this game. And the, I don't know. I might give Avramides 10 minutes in this half. Then we might look to move things around a little bit. We've created opportunities. We've been the better team in that first half. But I'm just a bit concerned now. PSG going in at halftime. A chance to reset and collect themselves. Kind of expect them to come out stronger in this half. As Camavinga, Fred through Carr... On this near side, tackled by Estevez is big. Falls to Teo Hernandez, though. Mbappe's effort is blocked by Perez with a diving header. And you know what? I think, I think I've seen enough in this game. I'm going for some changes. I'm going to bring in a very early change. A bit of a gamble, perhaps. Siapina, with his injections, is going to play. I would never, ever normally inject a player. But for a Champions League final, it felt like it was probably worth it. Let's see if he can do the business for us. Conse Sao on a yellow out on the left-hand side has not had a good game here. Maybe might, I might bring him off for Calderon, I'm thinking. But we'll let this highlight play out first as Mbappe dinks it in. Pedri blocked. Camavinga blocked. Again, lots of shots from range for PSG. They're being blocked away. Havertz, though, through on goal. Need to block this one. Ramadani makes a relatively simple save, a save you'd expect him to make. Again, I was about to make changes. Another highlight begins. It's Corridor this time with the throw in. Camavinga switched. Estevez wins it. Pedro Porro. Siapina now up front. Do not mind if we just lump it to him like that. Hannibal. Siapina is on ahead. Fortunately, you can't pick him out. He's very, very crowded in the middle here. Mbappe now bringing it forward for PSG. Just always scared of Mbappe. It's Mbappe in Football Manager. He's quite good at that football thing. Pedri on this near side. Looking maybe to get the ball into the box. Lays it to Teo Hernandez. His effort's blocked. I'll tell you what, we're getting a lot of men behind the ball here. Teo Hernandez again. Forward to Pedri. Tight angle. Surely got across it. Tries to. Gets blocked. I'm going to make changes. Um, I think I've got a gamble on this at a point. I don't know if that point is here just yet. Um, I really want to throw the wingers onto attack. I think. I'm going to do it. I'm, a, I'm really, really scared of the overlap. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tell the players to mark tighter. Even though they're on attack, I want them to mark tighter the uh, the fullbacks. Getting tight to them if they go on the overlap. But when we have the ball, we want them on the shoulder of those wingbacks at all time, trying to get in behind a little bit. You know what? Let's go a little more direct as well, I think, in our play. Try and get it forward a little bit quicker. Now that the wingers are on attack, I don't mind us lumping the ball for them to run onto a little bit more over the top. And that kind of plays into our hand. Anyway, Hannibal here in the wide area. We need an equaliser in what remains of this game. Hannibal, Estevez, the right back. Pedro Porro, he had the goal at his mercy. And he's hit it straight at Unai Simon. I feel like we've been the better team here. PSG, to be fair to them, have come out very well in this half. Oh, I've got one last sub in my back pocket. I'm going to make the exact same change that I made previously. I can't remember what game it was this year where I brought Gurk Denise up front and put Siapina out on the right-hand side. I want to say it was the Copa del Rey final. I think Gurk Denise is a man I can rely on for a goal if we get an opportunity. The issue is, not got long to get that opportunity. Nine minutes left in this game. We're kind of reaching that point of no return where I've, I've got to start to throw men forward. And it kind of sucks. Uh, I'm going to, in fact, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to push Hannibal forward here. Play him as a pressing forward. It's not really a position I'd ever play him in. Um, the issue being here is that I could play Siapina down the middle, but Hannibal can't play out on the right. He can only play through the middle. Also, Hannibal is very good down the middle. 
yeah, we've got to get the ball forward a little bit more. We've got to try and hit our strikers. I potentially need to go more attacking, but I'm so wary of leaving ourselves exposed at the back as Pedri brings it forward and through here. Let's just turn up the pressure as much as we can here. Eight minutes left. I need something pretty special out of the lads here. We came back from behind against Arsenal last year and fell short. This feels like a not dissimilar game, doesn't it? Five minutes left. I mean, there's only so much I can do here, really. I guess the most logical thing here is to try and throw Siapina forward as well. Oh, what do I want to do? Do I want to go with three strikers? I'm not sure I do. I mean, at this point, it's it's just about trying to create that one early chance. Whip the ball in early, as direct as you can, in transition, distribute quickly over the defence, and just lump it long. We, ha we have to gamble. Five minutes left. I need a highlight. Obviously, in going more attacking, we're going to leave ourselves exposed. That is inevitable, but there's nothing to lose here. We went into this game as the underdog. I don't want to lose two Champions League finals in a row. That just feels sad. But with, what, three and a half minutes left, we need a moment of heroics. Mbappe very nearly got on the end of it. It's dealt with very well, though. Colder on now with it. Not, not sure what he's doing there, but mm, we'll let it slide. I can't demand more. Three minutes left. Throw in on the far side here for PSG. It's Corridor of all players. Imagine if Corridor and Zivkovic win a Champions League before me. That's going to be upsetting, isn't it? Camavinga to Teo Hernandez. You can see they are happy to hold on to the ball and pen us back here. We've got to try and weather the storm of an attack and then just try and hit them on the break as quickly as possible. I mean, they brought on uh, Marquinhos now for what remains of this game. This game feels like it's just fizzling out. With extended highlights, we always get shown a highlight at the end. But is there one last chance? Maybe? There is! Oh my god. I thought it was going to be a pointless highlight, but with the last kick of regular time, it somehow made its way forward to Gurk Deniz. How did it get to him? Siapina, with the injections, couldn't get that. I can't believe Gurk Deniz has beat Unai Simon in a foot race there. On off the bench... He does the heroics. I've got to... Well, I've got to commend the... We're still in this. Oh, my God. I thought we were out. I genuinely... I was ready to give up, everyone. I think we all were. But we're not out this yet. The only issue now is... I need to just revert back our system to what we normally play. Okay, back to basics. Do we get an extra sub now? We do get an extra sub now. Oh, where would you use it? I'm looking at Sandro Tonali thinking you've not had a good game. And I'm actually thinking that Tussar could be a really good player to bring in this game. He's very, very good defensively. Just use him as a bit of a shield in the team. Play him as a, uh, as a centre mid on support. I, I have an idea in my head, but it might be really dumb. But I think I want to do it. I'm going to drop Tussar deep here. I'm going to drop him deep. I'm going to play him on DM on support. I'm then going to play Hannibal in front. And I want us to try and catch them on the break here. So for distribution, I want it to the flanks and I want it thrown long quickly. I'm basically looking for us to absorb all the pressure that we can. And then on the counter, we're going to try and get it into the wide areas as quickly as possible. With the wingbacks to try and get in behind because they were pushing their wingbacks up really far. far. Gerk Denise has proven his worth in this game. He's already got a goal for us. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring in Tussar just for a bit more, I think, stability in the midfield. Tonali's not had a very good game at all. Kapani was on a booking as well, which scares me slightly. But what, 30 minutes of this game left? I might be trying to be too smart here, but I think the tactical tweaks we did got us a goal. I feel like the way that they're playing PSG, our best bet is to try and catch them out. We're already 10 minutes into this first half of extra time and nothing is happening here. There might be one last highlight as PSG are going to have the throw in here on the far side. Havertz to Kamavinga, who's been having a lot of shots on range. He's going to ghost into the box here. Havertz's effort is blocked. We'll issue a shout to demand more. Hopefully that can see us defend this corner. It's getting nervy, everyone. It's getting nervy. One minute left to the half. Petrozuolo is going to head that one away. Calderon. Could unleash a counter, but we're not going to see it. So I guess it didn't work out. And into the second half of extra time we go here. See a, uh, not Siapina. 
Kapanu, by the way, really, really struggling in this game. I'm going to have to tell him to ease off tackles, I think. With him being tired, um, more likely to make a mistake. It's a bit risky. I don't really want to play him as a ball winning midfielder on defend in this situation. So we're going to change him to a DM on defend. Have got him on ease off tackles. I'm hoping Tusar can put in a tackle if needed. Seven minutes left of this game. Tusar on off the bench. Effort from range. It's cleared away. Five minutes left, and then it would be penalties. And given the stats of this game, <laughs> penalties might be the fairest possible outcome in a bizarre way. Hannibal here, though. Maybe one last chance. Ball played forward. It's dealt with. But Capanu is there. He's got Siapina with the injections to Estevez. Space and time for the cross in. The ball to Capanu is disappointing, but Estevez is going to win it back. He is battling away, is Thomas Estevez. We love that. Siapina. Hannibal. Shot blocked, cleared away by PSG. They are leaving no one forward right now. We are a matter of minutes away from possible penalties. It's now with Jorge Calderon, the hometown hero, dispossessed by Corridor. And unless something radical is about to happen, the Champions League final is going to penalties. And I don't, I don't think I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Siapina doesn't want to take a penalty or take him off. Um, so Hannibal, Estevez, Baraktar, Vardiol, Calderon. I mean, we've got plenty of players who seem like they want to have a penalty. We have lots of composed players, not many penalty takers. Oh, it feels so cruel for this to go down to this. I mean, we've pushed it further than we did last year. But this is penalties now. And I, we don't have many penalty shootouts. We've not had many over the years. I was really hoping that Ramadani was going to get his fingertips to that and turn it around the post. What I would say is Ramadani is the best goalkeeper in the world. He got the golden glove. Can our players score penalties? I mean, if they take them like that one by Hannibal, we'll be fine. It's 1-1 in the shootout. Kai Havertz now to step up for them. I'm so nervous. He's hit it. I can't even get my words out. He's missed the target. It's on Estevez, who looked very keen and eager to be involved at the end of the game. Can he score here? He can't score either. It's 1-1 in the shootout. After two each. I can't watch. Oh, my word. I thought when Havertz missed, that was the, the door opening of opportunity. It falls on Gerk Dines, who... Well, for his late goal, has seen us into this situation. Can he score in the shootout? He can. My heart rate is through the roof, everyone. I can feel it. My pulse. The nerves. Pedri steps up for PSG. Ramadani in goal. Can't get down to it. Pressure back on us. I hate taking penalties second. I hate not being able to set the expectations. We're now looking at Gvardiol. He looked confident going into this. Can he finish it? He kicks it straight at the keeper. He kicks it straight at the keeper. Jao Pedro taking the penalty for PSG. If he scores, they've won. I feel like we're done. Somehow it's more painful than last year. Somehow, somehow this is worse. The last minute Gert Denise goal, the way in which we weathered the storm of a superior squad. And we lose it all on penalties right at the very end. I can't really knock Vardiol for missing his. He's a he's a big reason that we're even in this situation. I've said it before at the start of this year. I'll say it again. Next season is our last season at Racing. We'll have a World Cup with Spain to end the series. We have one more year. <sighs> one more chance to try and win this competition. But I think we have just blown it. Oh, two finals in two years. That that last-minute goal 
It was so good. It was so promising. But it's all for absolutely nothing. We fall apart in the Champions League final. PSG win. Siapina is now out. And... I mean, don't get me wrong. It's another great double. It's a really good double. We've won the, we've won the Copa del Rey and La Liga again. But I wanted a Champions League. I still want a Champions League. We have one last year to try and get a Champions League. If there's one silver lining to all of this, we have got the Club World Cup to look forward to. We are going to be playing in the Club World Cup this summer. So there won't be the standard end of uh, season episode really today because... I don't, the season's technically not over yet, I guess. Does the Club World Cup count as this year or next year? I don't know. I'm trying to get to the trophy award ceremony that normally happens. We do still get it. But yeah, I mean, there's more silverware to play for this summer. We've also, next time out, got the Nations League semi-finals and final potentially to try and win with Spain, which is going to be pretty good. I mean, in terms of players this year... Conse Sowers won signing of the year. He got an A+. Plus. I mean, we signed him for free. He's got 11 goals and 17 assists. He's done quite well. Gallini, good average rating. Played 22 games for us. Was part of our rotated 11. Um, Petrozuolo, really, really good season. And even Tussar. You know, Tussar played a lot of games. The fact that I brought him on in that Champions League final to steady the ship in the midfield, I think, tells you a lot about him. He's a player who I trust at 32. He's very experienced. Um, Good mentals, great defensively. And uh, yeah, he played 35 matches in all competitions this year. He played fairly frequently. Um, the rest of our additions were youngsters, so nothing's really happened there. In terms of the sales, I mean, Corridor left us. I think in hindsight, selling him for 60 million was probably the right move. I don't think he's that good. I think 60 million is really good money for him. Obviously, he's just won a Champions League final against me, just like Zivkovic did. So basically, whoever I sell my right back to this summer, may, maybe stick some money on them to win the Champions League because yeah, that, that seems to be the pattern. In terms of results across the season, we had a great season in the league. We only lost two games all year. I feel like the unbeaten season is going to be tough to come by. We got closer to it last year with only one loss. This year we've had two, but still, we're looking like a pretty dominant force. To be fair to Barcelona, they did very, very well this year themselves. They only finished three points behind us. In terms of our top goal scorer in the league, it was Avramides. A lot of those goals were penalties, um, and he missed a big chance in the Champions League final. So it means absolutely nothing. FIFA Club World Cup, I mean, that's not happened. This isn't the FIFA Club World Cup. Look, it, the FIFA Club World Cup is yet to happen. Football manager doesn't know it. In the Champions League... <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. Copa del Rey, we won. That was good. Barak Dar, Gurk Deniz, five goals to his name. He's been a really just good player for us over the years. Pops up with really important goals, consistent and reliable. Even today, he was consistent and reliable, unlike perhaps some other players in our team. Biggest win was 6-0. Match to remember 4-1 against Valencia. That was a really good result at the time. Valencia were in third. And, uh, well, financially, things are all really, really good. So the natural question is, Jack... How much money have we got to spend this year? Not much. We'll talk about it in a moment. But first, let's just reflect on how good I am. I got manager of the year. That's nice. Uh, Gavardiol got fans player of the season. Young player of the season went to Avramides. Signing of the season went to Conce Sao. Galini got goal of the season. It's quite nice to see lots of variety in the players here. Often you just kind of have the same player win everything and it's a bit underwhelming. In terms of record breakers, Ramadani, 34 clean sheets this year. He is, he is quite good to be fair to him. He is quite good. Anyway, you can see here kind of our general review of things. What is the plan for the future, Mr. Chairman? He wants us to challenge for the La Liga title. Quarterfinal of the Champions League. I really want to win the Champions League. I think next year's the last season of this save game. We'll have the World Cup to end things out on. A potential treble in La Liga. I mean, that would be cool, wouldn't it? To do a treble uh, like alongside Barcelona and Real Madrid. But I really wanted a Champions League. I really wanted a Champions League. And ah, you can probably hear the, the pain and annoyance in my voice. Not not happening this year, everyone. Uh, we'll accept the current club vision. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this all later. As I said, this isn't really the end of the year. Um, goalkeeper of the season went to Donnarumma. Gvardiol won Defender of the Year, even though he missed a penalty in the final. 
And Bappe won midfielder of the season. Conte Sal came runner up. And we didn't feature anywhere else there. I've got to decide on a Spain squad. In fact, no, the Spain squad's already decided. When is that what game with Spain? Oh my word, we played the Netherlands in three days. Yeah, I don't really get much rest, do I, with this whole international and club management shabam. It's a, it's a packed pack, pack schedule. So in terms of what's next for us, we have got a transfer window. It is going to open. We've got loads of money to spend if we want to. I say loads. It's not actually that much. In the actual bank balance, we've got 128 million or 24 million. Don't know where eight came from. I think I was looking here at the same time where we have 28 million pounds to spend in transfer budget. Um, can someone have a word with Alfredo Perez about increasing the budgets, please? Because like we have a new stadium and stuff now. We've had an expansion. We, we have money to spend, Alfredo. Put your hand in your pocket, mate. But yeah, a little bit of money to spend. Of course, as I already alluded to, the Club World Cup is on the horizon. The schedule for it, I don't think, has been fully planned out yet because the preliminary round has to happen. But that's going to be going on kind of towards the end of June. Of course, the Club World Cup has seen a big overhaul in real life where it now happens every four years. There's some pretty bloody big teams in this Club World Cup, so could be some interesting games, some games against unlikely opponents, which should be a fun little detour and distraction. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to cover it in videos. We're going to have to figure that out. Additionally, of course, with regards to Spain, we'll talk more about it next time, but we've got the World Cup qualifiers going on at the moment that have been going well. However, we've got the Nations League going on as well, where we're going to have a third-place playoff or a final as well as the semi-finals against the Netherlands to play tomorrow. So a couple of big games against big teams. And whilst you might look at it and go, well, the Nations League doesn't matter. but it's silverware. I want to win everything. I don't think I've won the Nations League this year in Football Manager. So it's something else I want to tick off my Football Manager bucket list before the season's over and we're into FM22. But anyway, gang, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. A disappointing end to the season, perhaps. If you have any words of wisdom, encouragement, just anything like that, that would be very nice round about now. We pushed PSG hard. We couldn't quite push them all the way. We lost in the shootout. You know, I mean, you don't get any closer than that. So maybe next year is going to be our year. <sighs> we'll find out. I get Spain as a distraction next time. I hope to see you then. If you've enjoyed today's video, as always, do drop a like on it. And other than that, it is me, Jack. I'm going to go and have a lie and a cry down. A cry down. A cry and a lie down. A lie and a cry down. Why not? I'm going to have a lie and a cry down. That's not what I was meant to say. It was meant to be cry and lie down. I basically, I've lost the plot, so I'm now going to leave. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Words are hard. Winning Champions Leagues is even harder. I'm out. I'm out. Stop, stop the episode.